I think the best thing I ever did in the van is... Hey everybody! Welcome back! I'm so excited today. I'm going on my first trip back of the year. It's been five months since I've been camping. I've been hiding out uh, in, in the winter months, hiding out from the cold. But now it's a beautiful spring day. It's a perfect day for my first trip back. And I'm headed out to the Valley of Fire State Park right outside of Las Vegas. I'm gonna do some hiking, gonna do some camping. Uh, it's 70 degrees, perfect temperature. And I can't wait. So if you don't know, Valley of Fire is uh, about an hour outside of Las Vegas. The road uh, is a little harrowing to drive. Uh, it's just the interstate, but there's road construction and trucks and it's kind of a mess. So not for the faint of heart, but um, it's a beautiful desert landscape and uh, hope to show you around. Gas station, which is um, almost a dollar cheaper than what I paid in town. I would not have expected that. Good to know. So I think there's some BLM land out here, and that's where I'm planning on camping tonight. So before I lose service here, I'm uh, downloading some maps. I've been using this uh, Onyx Off Road. It's a pretty cool app. I can download some maps of the park, download some maps of where I might stay tonight. But it's cool because uh, I can click on it and it tells me what's BLM land. And uh, let's see. And it shows me where the state park is. So that's always nice when you're trying to camp on BLM land. This is a subscription, and I also have Onyx Hunt, which is kind of a cool app too. I don't hunt, but uh, it lets you save locations and stuff like that. Look at this view over here. Isn't that cool? It's starting to get prettier. This is an interesting van in front of me. I wonder if any of you have uh, rented a van like this. Looks interesting. Let me know in the comments. All right, I just went through the uh, entrance uh, into the park. It does cost, I think, $10 to get in, but I have some friends that gave me a park pass as a gift. It's my first time using it. It's so exciting to get in for free. Isn't this cool? This is my least favorite uh, aspect of state and national parks. And that is, there's so many people. the visitor center up here. What cool scenery, huh? Huge this rock is. <laughs> OK. 
hey, this is my parking lot. But uh, let's see, I wonder if there's any spots. Goodness. Oh, goodness. I didn't see that bump. <laughs> oh no, my water spilled. Ah. Crap. Well, that was some rough uh, driving there in the parking lot. <laughs> I sort of have a spot. Okay, I'm off. I feel a little silly that I have my huge backpack on here, but uh, I'm kind of training for a hike. So I want to wear it as much as I can. My car says it's 73 degrees and it feels pretty warm. <laughs> so this is uh, not a place to come after April at all. It'd be way too hot. I'm totally okay with tarantulas, as long as they're not in my van. <laughs> Some beautiful scenery. I'm trying out my new, I'm trying out my new homemade shoes here. They're working pretty well in the sand actually. I wasn't sure how my shoes would do on uh, this sort of terrain, but they do, they're do they doing great. It's, they're just a uh, floor mat rubber that I, like those little puzzle mats that I cut up, but they're pretty grippy actually. This is the true test of my shoes here. Either they're gonna stick or I'm gonna bite the dust and fall down this hill. <laughs> so far so good. All right, I made it. I did not uh, come sliding down the hill on my butt. <laughs> so, so far, shoes are working. This is the end of the fire wave trail. And continuing, oops, almost slipped. Continuing on to the Seven Wonders Loop. So, of course, as soon as I uh, sang my shoes praises, I slipped twice. Didn't fall, but... <laughs> Maybe they need a little bit of uh, rubber on the bottom. So I did uh, forget my hat, which I'm regretting right about now. Um, it's only like 75 degrees, but I don't think people understand how intense the sun is in the Southwest. So I brought something else that could be even better. I always keep it in my van and that is a sun umbrella. <laughs> Oh, shade. So nice. If you don't have a sun umbrella, it's reflective. And uh, I don't know, it's pretty nice to have. I'm glad I have it today. <laughs> Oh, it's so nice to be hiking in shade all the time. 
<laughs> Can you see how like those ridges are raised on this rock? How cool. It looks like they're like cement glued together or something. Oh, I bet kids would have just the best time of their lives here, <laughs> climbing on all these rocks. Wow, isn't that cool? I don't think my umbrella is going to fit through here. <laughs> Interesting little shady cave. Well, my umbrella is definitely not going to fit through there. <laughs> Oh, this is crazy. <laughs> this is so much fun. That was definitely the best part of the hike. <laughs> Temperature dropped like 30 degrees in there. Well, that was successful. It would not have been had I uh, brought my hat and not my umbrella. So that was a, a fortuitous happening. So yeah, that was cool. I think that was like 1.8 miles maybe. My shoes did great. My ankle did great. Now time to cool off and maybe do one more. 20 minutes later. This is White Dome Loop. Hiking is not recommended. <laughs> oh, my sandals. My sandals are so perfect for this sand. Well, that was a great day of hiking. Um, I got in late, so I only spent a couple hours hiking, but uh, I'm really happy that my ankle is holding up. I've got about a 10 pound pack on and uh, my sandals did pretty good. So all that is really great. I hiked maybe about uh, three and a half miles maybe. I'm gonna try to do maybe four more tomorrow. My goal is to be able to do 10 miles, at least 10 miles, uh, several days in a row. So I am on my way. Now it's time to uh, drive out of the park and find some place to camp in uh, BLM land. So we'll see if I can find a parking spot before it gets dark. So I just turned down this road, which uh, is kind of the closest BLM road. It's very rocky, 
but I think there might be a little spot up here. Well, this is pretty close to the road, but I think it'll do for tonight. I don't really have to go super far down this road. It's for one night. Little campfire ring there. And uh, I think I'm level. So I think this will do for tonight. A wonderful five-star free hotel. Well, the sun just went down over this hill here and the temperature dropped like, you know, 20 degrees. Um, so I'm gonna make some dinner. I was thinking I didn't want anything hot because I'd been in the sun all day, but once the uh, temperature went down, some warm food sounds pretty good actually. So my table's been having some issues, um, but to be solved another day. So I've been doing an experiment of simplifying my meals and I've been having some sort of bean and some sort of grain just about every single night for the last like six months. <laughs> and it's been going great. There's so much variety you can have actually with the different grains, different beans, different sauces. Um, so it's been working out really well for me. I don't have to plan my dinners. It's really cheap, it's easy. And I can actually like cook it and not ruin it. So that's what we're gonna have tonight. I'm making uh, quinoa and beans. So I normally do about half a cup. And it's pre-washed, which is very handy, to a cup of water. with some uh, salt, of course, and some pepper, and some Italian seasoning. And how about a dash of ginger? Why not? <laughs> okay. And, oh, I have to turn on the inverter. And let me just stir this up a bit. Push the button. And that's it, that's all I have to do. It's great. <laughs> it greatly increases my chance of success. And the beans, I found these little uh, boxed beans, which is a whole lot better than canned because it's just easier to open, easier to dispose of, etc., etc. But I have found that uh, it's not that great to put this liquid in my sink. The sink really does well if it's just like soapy water that goes in mainly. You know, wash your face, brush your teeth, that sort of thing. But like food waste that goes in there, stinks really quickly. So I think I'm gonna pour this outside. We'll give the plants some water, some nutrients. I love that my little fridge has been on all day. So the quinoa is done. 
Beautiful. And I think I'm just going to eat it out of the pot here. This is going to be very fancy here, guys. I'm going to cut up my avocado. All right. More salt over the top. And I found that I don't really need to heat the beans. If I just give it a good stir, uh, the quinoa seems to kind of heat everything up enough. Oh, it smells good. Add some greens in here. All right. Not bad for a post hike meal. All right, a great dinner for post hike. Yeah, it's great. The avocado makes it creamy. The quinoa is nice and warm. Yeah, simplifying my meals, simplifying my dinners has really kind of been a game changer for me. It's helped my budget so much. Those rice and beans, you know, you don't get much cheaper than that. But I put all sorts of different seasonings in. Sometimes I'll have salsa. Sometimes I'll have pesto. Um, I have all sorts of different salad dressings that I'll just mix in with this. Um, and it's really amazing how versatile it can be. And it's pretty healthy. Um, like a can of beans has about 30 grams of protein. So, you know, if you can stomach that much beans, uh, which it takes a little getting used to, <laughs> but I don't know. It's been great for me. I think the best thing I ever did in the van is my power system. That has made such a difference. You know, I've tried a ton of power stations and those are fine, good, but having solar on the roof and having an immense battery bank has just been so awesome. I can run my fridge. I ran my fridge all day today and it didn't even use, it didn't even touch the battery. So the, the solar was completely enough to run the fridge. And now that the sun is down, my fridge is running off the battery. My rice cooker ran off the battery. And I still have 98% left. If you're struggling with power, find somebody or learn how to install a system yourself. Because it just makes such a huge difference in um, just how much you're thinking about. You know, you just don't even have to worry about it. As soon as the sun comes up, my batteries are charging, which is great for me because I don't get up early. <laughs> so by the time I get up, my batteries are fully charged. I haven't really told you what I'm training for. Um, I've spent some time on the Pacific Crest Trail, which is a trail that uh, goes from Mexico to Canada. 2,600 miles, I think. Um, I've hiked 500 miles on it one summer, 300 miles on it another summer. And I would love to hike more on it and to like finish it. So I'm kind of thinking about trying to finish it over like the next, I don't know, 10 years or something, just section by section. Because to do the whole thing, it takes like, uh, six months, five months. And I just don't think I can really take that much time off to do the whole thing. So I'm thinking about just doing little section by section uh, until it's finished. But to do that, I've got to do some work on my ankle. If you missed some of my videos from um, last year, I found out I have extra bones in my feet, which have 
caused me foot pain my entire life. <laughs> Who knew? So it's really, really hard for me to find shoes that fit. I wear a size 12, uh, narrow, <laughs> which is like impossible in women's shoes. So I started making my own shoes. I started making moccasins and that has worked out pretty well, but they're not waterproof. So that's been tough. So I've kind of gone on this whole barefoot um, minimalist shoe kick because my feet, my ankle doesn't hurt when I wear shoes that are completely flat and like have no arch support. If it's as close to being barefoot as possible, my ankle doesn't hurt. Otherwise, it there's like a tendon that pops over the bone and I can't put any weight on my foot. So not ideal, but it's been getting better. And uh, I've been training at the park all winter long. I've been walking around this track and trying to carry a little bit more weight, a little bit more weight, walk a little farther. And I've really been improving. So I'm trying to get my stamina up so that I can walk 10 miles at least hopefully 15, uh, for a couple days in a row. Then I'll know I can do a couple days on the Pacific Crest Trail. So that's what I'm working towards. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to finish my dinner and uh, hit the hay and go back to the park tomorrow and do another hike. And I will see you on the next one. Bye, guys.